Howdy, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today, I wanted to do a long awaited comparison of the Spy Point Micro LTE and the Tacticam Reveal. I've had these cameras out for about three or four months now, and I really have gained an appreciation for one of these. I really started liking one quite a bit, and I even went out and bought two more of them because I liked it that much. But before I get into which one I like, I wanted to talk about the pros and cons of each one and which one wins some categories. So I'll start with the Spy Point since that's the one I did my first video on. So a couple of pros, I liked the price of it. It's only a hundred bucks. Really, you know, you can get a budget camera for 50, but to get a decent camera, you're usually paying two, 300 bucks, especially if you want it to sell. So for something at a hundred bucks, I couldn't really complain. The size of this, I loved. It was small, compact. You could carry it with you. It was pretty nice to have a, a camera that small that was still a cell camera. It was very easy to set up. You all saw in my first video that it was pretty simple setup. There weren't a lot of settings, which I guess can kind of be a con too, but it was pretty seamless and wasn't that difficult to set up, which I really liked. It also came with a hundred free pictures and I don't really know another cell camera that does that. And so that's pretty cool because in the summer you can just leave it on and you don't have to worry about paying for anything. And if you run out of the hundred pictures, so what? You're not really that interested in what it's picking up, but it still takes the pictures and saves them on your memory card. It just won't transmit them to you. So this camera can send a burst of two pictures which is pretty nice. The app has some cool features as well. Unfortunately, you have to pay for some of those features, so that's kind of disappointing. But if you're willing to pay for the features, it's got some pretty cool setup there. And then one thing I really liked about this and I was kind of concerned was the battery life. I changed the batteries once in probably four months and it's on the second set of batteries now and it's at like 90% still. So the battery life on these things are solid. So we'll go through some of the cons of the Spy Point now. So one of the things that I really disliked about it and it could have been where I had it set up the way I had it set up, but I kind of messed with the settings some hoping that it would help. But I ended up with a ton of blank pictures and I actually just watched a review from Sean's Outdoor Adventures, and he kind of said the same exact thing, so I know it's not just me, but if it was windy at all out there, I mean, you'd have 30 or 40 blank pictures if you had any sort of grass or limb in your view. And so that 100 free pictures, if you want in the summer, would be gone in a matter of days if it's a windy day outside. So that part was pretty frustrating. You know, I could go through 500 pictures like that, and, you know, it kind of sucked. So I mentioned that it would take two pictures. However, every time I had it set on that setting, the two pictures were like bang, bang. So I literally got the same picture each time. And so to me, that was kind of a waste of the pictures that I was paying for. So I brought it back down to one picture because really it was the exact same picture almost every single time. Maybe like if it was walking through the frame, you may have gotten a portion like this and then it was shifted over like that much. So, I mean, it was, very quick trigger on the second picture and so it really wasn't worth having it send me two pictures. So the quality on this really just is not that great. I compared it to some of the cam parks that I had done a review on previously and I actually liked the cam park quality better. Even the nighttime quality is not that good. You can request HD pictures on the app and I did that on a few of them. And I had issues, A, with it even sending me HD pictures. It kept giving me an error, which could be due to signal strength or something like that. But even when I got the HD pictures, it didn't really seem like it was that great of quality. And I'll show you, I'll go through my phone and kind of show you the app as well so you can see that because it just wasn't, I wasn't happy with it. And you had to pay for HD pictures too. So I know it was only $5 for 50 HD pictures, but really it didn't seem like you were getting that great of quality of picture. You can see that today I've gotten some pictures. Here's a blank one. I need to get a hog kind of on the way out of a picture. And it looks like I have a hog in there a little bit there on the bottom left. 
I'm not gonna go through all these because I already have, but literally this was a windy day yesterday. And those are all blank pictures. Again, another blank picture, blank picture, blank picture. So you get my drift here. Oh, there's a coyote. So there's just a lot of blank pictures. So if you go to photos, like I mentioned before, you had to pay for certain things. So you could do the buck for free, but if you wanted any of these other features, you had to pay for it. And honestly, I don't think it worked that well in my opinion, so not worth paying for that. As far as full HD goes, I'll show you the one full HD picture I have on here. And it's really not that great of a picture. And then it has option of favorites, which again, you have to pay for. So that part kind of sucks that you can't favorite pictures or separate them into categories or anything like that. I mentioned the maps feature, still says coming soon. They haven't done anything with that. Same with the weather feature. So really those are kind of pointless. So that kind of gives you an idea of the quality of pictures I'm getting and really I just don't think they're that great. And one thing that I really like on trail cameras itself is being able to have a video of the action. And unfortunately, this five point does not do video whatsoever. So that being said, that was kind of a con in my book was I'd like it to do a video. Didn't need to necessarily send it, but just having that option would have been nice. All right, so that covers my pros and cons for the spy point. If you have any questions on anything I went through, please leave a comment below and I'll try and answer that. Now to talk about the pros and the cons on the Tacticam reveal. The picture quality of this was night and day difference compared to the spy point. I really liked the picture quality and the nighttime pictures were great. I mean, I'll show you all some pictures and they, they were comparable to, you know, my budget camera. But again, like I mentioned before, I really liked those pictures and this is sending it as a cell picture as well. So for a hundred bucks, you really can't beat that quality of a picture. You can see your pictures are right up here when you get them. Nighttime pictures are pretty good. You get a little bit of blur if they're moving too quickly like that. But you can see, you know, I don't have any blank pictures in here. You know, it, it works pretty well. I do have a lot of hogs, clearly, though. I mean, just look at the quality of the picture. When you zoom in, it starts to degrade some. But, I mean, the quality is just 10 times better. You can go to your gallery and you can separate little folders like I did. I mean, you can just see the quality of picture here. Similar to the spy point, this was easy to set up, pretty seamless. What I liked is you could do it in the app or you could do it on the camera itself, which was pretty nice. One thing I wasn't sure of is if I do it on the camera, does it mess up stuff I did on the app or vice versa? So I wasn't sure with that and I didn't really mess with it too much. I just fix it one way or the other. And then sometimes I did change the settings on the app and it seemed to pick it up. So wasn't too worried about that. It seemed to work pretty well. What I liked is it took video and it was pretty good quality video. It doesn't send it over cell, so you never got it in the app, but it did take video and that was a big plus for me. The price, similar to the spy point, like 10, 15 bucks more or so. But again, for the budget camera, for a cell budget camera, this is top notch. So one thing that I did kind of like, and I think I have it listed as a pro and a con to an extent, was if you paid say 500 pictures and you have a handful of cameras, it combined your pictures. So it wasn't like, you know, one camera could take 200 and you lost that 300 pictures. It was, say I have three cameras, I have 1500 pictures, and this one could take 700, another one could take 300 and I still have 500 left for the third one to take. So it was kind of shared across all the cameras. So I didn't really mention this as a con for the spy point because it doesn't bother me that much, but it is kind of a pro for the Tacticam was they use just an SD card, not a micro SD card. And dealing with the size of an SD card is just much better than dealing with a micro SD card. You know, it's not a game changer for me that this one did not have an SD card. I'm okay with the micro SD as that's what pretty much all of my cameras are. So I did have to buy a couple SD cards to be able to swap these out, but it was worth it in my opinion because dealing with an SD card is much easier. So we'll go into the cons here. 
One thing I didn't like was the size of this camera. This thing was almost twice the size as the Spy Point. And honestly, going into when I reviewed both these cameras, I really thought that was going to be the downfall for the Tacticam was I just did not like the size of it. Was not okay with, you know, lugging around something that big and dealing with it. And then in the grand scheme of things, I worked with it a bit and it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like a deal changer, but still, I wish they could get it into a more compact version like the Spy Point. And the reason I believe it had to be that big was they needed 12 batteries. And the battery life was still pretty good on these. I would say it's pretty similar to the Spy Point, except you needed 12 instead of eight. So I put that as a con because when you gotta swap out 12 batteries, that can get expensive pretty quick. Another con that I didn't like was if you wanted to send one, two, three pictures, it only sent the second picture. So I could say, yeah, I wanna take three pictures. It's only gonna send the second one. It doesn't send the first two, and then same with the second. It doesn't send the first one, it just sends the second one. So given that, you know, you do save pictures, which was kind of nice, but I did like having the ability to see multiple pictures. So on this one as well, I ended up bumping it down and just taking one picture because to me, usually the first picture was the one where you caught them in motion and you caught them right where you wanted them. So the second picture, they were halfway out the frame, and the third picture, they were halfway out the frame. So really using just one picture on this one as well was the way to go. So I kind of mentioned this in the pros and this is a little bit different, but you can't have multiple plan types. So say you have one camera that you know is not gonna get a lot of action and you just don't wanna pay that much for it. You want the 500 picture plan. And then you have one that's like on a feeder and you're gonna get a thousand pictures. You can't have one on 500 and one on a thousand. So I, even though they share pictures and everything, it does kind of suck that you can't separate out each camera as a plan. So if you have multiple cameras set up in multiple properties, you can't really separate those as separate plans from what I can tell. And I wish you could do that because, you know, you may want to keep some running and others not, or you want to, you know, have 500 on one and a thousand or unlimited on another. And that, that just isn't an option with a Tacticam. I'm gonna list a few items out and tell you which camera I think wins that category. And then I will go into my favorite camera and which one I bought more of. So for price, they're obviously pretty close. I believe this was like 115, 119, and this is 99. So obviously the Spy Point is gonna win that as far as price goes. Unfortunately, you do have to pay a little bit more for things if you want them in the app with the Spy Point. So that may negate it, but if you're buying more than one camera, this definitely is the better price option. Battery life. So the Spy Point wins battery life. They both have similar battery life, honestly. The Tacticam, I have had to place the batteries a few times, but that's because I was running the video and the video just kills the batteries. So I ended up taking video off for the season and was just doing pictures. And when I did that, the battery life was pretty similar. However, this again took 12 batteries and this took eight. So for that reason, I'm gonna give the nod to Spy Point. Size. I feel like I've talked about this one enough. Obviously, Spy Point is the winner of size. I like how compact it is and it's just easy to carry around and easy to work with. Again, the only downfall would probably be the SD card, but not a big deal. So as far as the app goes, I'm gonna have to give that one to Tacticam. I think they're pretty similar again, but there's just a little bit more settings, a little bit more features, and there's a lot more free things you get with the Tacticam app that you don't get with Spy Point. If you're willing to pay for all the items in Spy Point and they work, not sure if they do because I didn't pay for them, then maybe the Spy Point would win, but given the fact that you have to pay for that, and with the Tacticam, it's free and it works pretty well. I'm gonna give the nod on the app to the Tacticam. All right, so now we're gonna go into quality. Day picture quality, I gotta give to Tacticam. They just were pretty much a lot better than the Spy Point. Even with the HD pictures, the Tacticam's regular pictures were even better than those. Nighttime picture quality, again, the tag team, I talked about this before. This camera way, way, way outperformed the Spy Point when it came to nighttime quality. 
and honestly quality in general. So when it comes to quality of picture, you can't go wrong with the Tacticam reveal. Data plans. So as far as the price of the data plans go, they're pretty much identical. There are some discounts you can get if you have multiple cameras. So if you have a three cameras, your second two, you get like 50 cents or a dollar off per month. And I think SpyPoint does something similar. With SpyPoint, you do get 100 free pictures up front, which is pretty nice. As far as price of the plans, I think they're pretty much the same. So it's kind of a toss up. Honestly, if I had to pick one, I'd say the spy point solely because you get the 100 free pictures. Otherwise, it, it's pretty much a tie in my book. So settings and features. They both pretty much have the same settings and features. I would say the Tacticam has more options though. One of them, obviously you can video. The burst pictures, you have an extra picture you can take. They both have pretty similar settings, but there's just a lot more options with those settings with the Tacticam. So I would give settings and features to Tacticam. Setup and connection to network. So the setup of both these, as you saw in my first two videos, was pretty seamless. If you wanna see me set those up again, you can check out those videos here in the corner and watch me set up the Tacticam and the spy point. So even though the setup was probably about the same, I would say getting it to connect to the network was much easier to do on the Tacticam. I had moved this camera a handful of times and every single time, I mean, I would sit there for 10 minutes with the light blinking, trying to get signal. And then this camera, I mean, it's a, it was pretty obvious on the screen. It had a little screen for you to look at and it would say searching and then it would connect and say 4G and show you the number of bars. All the spy point had was a little flashing light and you just kind of had to wait till it turned green and that was about it. One thing that was cool about the TAC team was once it was set up, you could click OK on it and it would send a test picture to you to make sure it's what you wanted, that it was actually sending to the network. It did use one of your pictures, but you at least knew your camera was working. The spy point to do that, you had to close it wait till the time went out and then you could step in front of it and send a picture. So it wasn't as easy to do, but you could still kind of do the same thing. That being said, I would give the nod on the setup and connection to network to Tacticam. All right, so the overall winner. You may have noticed by kind of the pros and cons of me going through this by now, but to me, the overall winner would be the Tacticam reveal. It is a little more expensive. It does take a few more batteries, but you have way more options. You have a nice screen on the front that you can change the options there. You can see the pictures. You can do so much more with this. But what really made the difference to me was the quality. I can't tell you enough that the quality of this was just that much better than the spy point. When this camera went off and sent me a notification, I knew there was going to be an animal in the picture. I mean, I would say 90% of the time I did not get blank pictures. This camera, I got a blank picture probably 80% of the time. So that being said, I did purchase two more of the Tacticam reveals and I really enjoy them. They work out well. It is hard to find them right now, which is kind of a downfall, but I would say if you have a choice between these two cameras, I would buy the Tacticam reveal. I'll still use the spy point because I have the camera and you get 100 free pictures but I'm not probably gonna buy any more spy points because this thing just knocks it out of the park. If y'all have any questions about either of these cameras or need help making a decision on why you should purchase one or the other, feel free to leave a comment below or go ahead and shoot me an email. It's listed in the description below as well. And I'll leave a link to both these cameras. I will try and find you a link where you can find this camera. It has been hard to find. But if you get on their mailing list, they usually send out an email to where they're sending a bunch of them shortly. So just keep an eye out for that. And then this camera you can get pretty much anywhere. So I'll put a link for that as well. Thanks for watching and I hope you all enjoyed this comparison of these two cell cameras. See you all next week.